Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Stocks Around Us with Me Pizza. Guys, we've been to Malaysia a few times now and most of the times we're always in KL City because that's where the action usually is. Well, some of you still might not know that Malaysia is developing a new metropolis that is three times the size of Singapore and twice the size of Hong Kong. It is poised to become the new economic hub in the world. This metropolis is down south of Malaysia, making it the center of all transportation routes. And they say that it is the entire world in one city because it's going to have everything there. Today, we're going to talk to one of the key developers within the region. They also happen to be one of Malaysia's top property development firms. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to UEM Sunrise Brahad. UEM Sunrise is the flagship company for the property development businesses of UEM Group, which is wholly owned by Kazana, an investment fund of the Malaysian government. Their core business is in developing macro townships and high-rise residential, commercial, and mixed developments. The company is the master developer of Iskandar Putri, previously known as Nusajaya, which is one of the five flagship zones within Iskandar, Malaysia. Therefore, most of their developments are concentrated in the southern region in which they have developed a number of landmark properties within the area. Puteri Harbour is their integrated waterfront development spanning close to 1,100 acres and it's said to be a world-class tourist destination with residences, commercial and lifestyle attractions such as marinas, family indoor theme park and resorts, while the Johor State Government's administrative center next to the Putri Harbor houses the state and federal government buildings. In addition, they also develop SILC, which is a managed industrial park of approximately 1,300 acres, and the AFIAT Health Park, which is set to become a healthcare destination. This is not to mention a number of resorts and residential projects within the southern region, ranging from terrace houses to apartments to high-rise residences. In the central region, UEM Sunrise is known for their award-winning high-rise residential and commercial projects in Mount Kiara and Cyberjaya. Symphony Hills is a high-ended residential development in Cyberjaya that includes terrace houses, villas, townhouses, and apartments. Arcoris Marquera is a mixed-use development with a retail and a number of residential projects. The group also offers large-scale developments within the region, such as Serene Heights Bengi, Radia, Seremban Forest Heights, and many more. Outside of Malaysia, UEM Sunrise ventured into developing properties in Vancouver, Canada, which includes a mixed residential and commercial development of five tower blocks and townhouses. In addition, they expanded to many projects in Melbourne, Australia, and many other countries. And they continue to seek new development opportunities moving forward. So as you can see, the company is expanding its international footprint while maintaining a strong foothold in Malaysia, particularly in helping shape the economic landscape of Iskandar Puteri. Here to talk more about the company is our special guest, Anwar Sharin, the CEO of UEM Sunrise. So Anwar, since UEM Sunrise is the main developer in Iskandar Puteri, can you explain a little bit about this region? Uh, Iskandar Puteri has been uh, around, this is about 10 years now. Um, when we first came in into this project, you know, we started off with about a very sizable land bank of about 24,000. And as a master developer, of course, you know, there are certain elements of the project where we will do ourselves. But we also decided to actually sold some of the land banks to other developers so that we can create the vibrancy and see you know, Iskandar Putri to, to flourish. At this point in time, if we talk about Iskandar Putri overall, um, the launch GDV we, we've done, we have launched about 12 billion worth of GDVs and 
you know, as far as our plan is concerned, we've still got about 68 billion worth of GDV that we're going to actually launch. Overall, at this point in time, we have uh, close to 7,000 acres worth of land. And it, there, there, there's a mixture of those that we've launched and the ones that, that are still in the pipeline. So as far as we're concerned, this is still, you uh, know, we, we're still in the, I would say, early stages of the overall master plan, which will probably take about 30 years to, you know, to, to fully come to, to, to fruition. But whatever that we have right now, we're very happy with the progress. Um, a lot of people have been coming in to buy the, the, the properties within the area. Uh, and it's a mixture. You know, when we talk about Iskandar Putri, uh, for us as a master developer, we talk about residentials, we talk about commercial, we talk about industrial parks. Uh, industrial parks, for example, we have what's called the SILC. That itself is, is about 1,300 acres um, on our res residential fronts, which represents a, a large proportion. There are so many sub-segments within that. Right. For me to, to, to go into detail is, is quite a lot, but exactly. as, as, a, as a developer, we, we offer a, a full suite of products uh, within this kind of country. So when you say you build a lot of residences, what are the main resident types that you build? We actually serve a whole segment of markets from our affordable range to our high-end range. And this from, from a pricing perspective, you know, we're talking about the 300,000 range kind of products mm -hmm. all the way to the more than uh, six, seven million kind of products as well. Uh, if you talk about the mix, of course, uh, from a GDV perspective, the high-end range will give me a higher GDV because you get to sell it at a higher, higher, higher price. Now, when these residences, you build them, are most of them freehold or lease or what's the proportion? A large chunk of it is actually freehold. freehold. And what would you say is your current flagship project at the moment? We have several. Uh, if you're talking about projects in Iskandar Putri, we have projects like East Ledang, where I mentioned just now, you know, we're talking about units that ranges more than a million to more than, uh, more than five million, uh, for example. We also have a project called Tiga, which is actually in the Putri Harbour side, where it's something that is very unique. Uh, it's fully sold out as well. So these are among sort of the premium products that we have in, uh, in Iskandar Putri. What is your sales target this year? Our sales target has remained consistent. You know, we're always looking for between two to two and a half billion kind of sales on a yearly basis uh, to make sure that you know, we we remain competitive within the environment. Um, nevertheless, we we take a position as well that this is, could, could be a tough year, and we don't want to actually overpromise um, the market. Right. And we hope we can actually achieve the two billion still. Uh, but we, we are wary of uh, the, the, the challenges that we will be having to achieve those. Why is this a tough year for property developers? I think if you look at how property market, um, how property market cycle takes place, it's, 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 there's a very close correlation to GDP. So when, you, when, uh, when the overall sentiment of the economy is not good, a lot mm -hmm. of people will cut back on big ticket items and certainly buying houses is something that is a big concern um, to, to people when they make their decisions. So it's a combination of factors that has an effect uh, when it comes to the property market. For, for us, the introduction of GST, for example, that took place this year. The overall economic environment, especially now with the lower oil prices and the country which is very dependent on oil exports and exports overall, uh, is certainly feeling the pinch from this. And access to credit, access to funding is also plays a very important role. During the good times, you know, we had the DIBS scheme whereby the developers are able to actually bear um, the, 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 the interest cost during the development. Uh, that has enabled easy access for people to actually buy houses. So when that actually went away, um, it presented a lot of challenges and no doubt it, when you talk about vibrancy of the property sector, uh, taxation also plays a very important issue, RPGT for example. And when the government decided to tax more to, to on people that are buying properties for speculative purposes, that also had an impact on people's appetite for property. Right. And lastly, 
lastly, how do you plan on expanding the Sunrise business as a whole? We, we have quite a lot of land bank in Johor that we still very, um, we, we feel that as I mentioned earlier, we're talking about a 30 years kind of uh, development, a project, development yeah. uh, project. Uh, nevertheless, we feel that we need to actually uh, have other land banks outside of uh, Iskandar Putri and hence we're looking at more projects in the Klang Valley as well. Overseas, we are keen but it will be very uh, project by project based so that's, that's how we look at it. Right, well thank you so much Anwar. Thank you very much. Financial Highlights At the end of 2014, UEM Sunrise's revenue was over 2.6 billion ringgits, or 26 billion baht. Its net profit was about 470 million ringgits, or 4.7 billion baht. Its net profit margin was around 18% and ROE at 7.7. Its PE was around 13 and PBV 1. At the end of 2015, UEM's share price was around 1 ringgit or 10 baht and its market cap was around 5 billion ringgit or 50 billion baht. Ladies and gentlemen, that was UEM Sunrise. Join us again next time for more company highlights with Me Pizza. Now if you'll excuse me, I think I'm going to go explore some more properties out there. You know, just in case I want to invest in a second home or something. See you guys later! Bye!